So I begin with a question, something for you to think about. Does God have a plan for your life? Does God have a plan for your life? And if you know your Bible, then you probably will tell me a verse, and you may know it by heart, and it's from a book that we've already looked at this year, because we're going through the whole Bible of the year. It's from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, 11. You may be familiar with that. When I, whenever I ask if God has a plan for your life, Jeremiah 29, 11 tends to come forth, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, right? Plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. <laughs> How many of you know that verse? Yeah. Okay, a lot of us know that verse. But did you know that that verse was given by Jeremiah right after a national tragedy? It was right after something way worse than 9-11. I know we look at that as a national tragedy that took place. But in the nation of Israel, the most holy place was the temple of God. The temple was completely destroyed. And not only that, the Jewish people were taken into captivity by Babylon. And Jeremiah says, I know the plans I have for you. I don't think they heard that very well. I don't think they heard that the way we hear that verse today. And they certainly didn't like the verse before it. The verse before Jeremiah 29, 11, verse 10, I'll show that one to you. It says, verse, thus says the Lord, Jeremiah said, when 70 years, did you hear that? 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. 70 years to fulfill God's plan. How many of you can even wait a week <laughs> when you pray for God to answer your prayer, for his plan to unfold? I gotta believe when Jeremiah said these words, he was ducking stones, man. They were picking up stones and throwing them at him because 70 years for the plan to unfold. Well, this morning we're looking at two books in which we see that plan come to action. We're looking at Ezra and Haggai, and I wanted to get Nehemiah in there because that was part of our reading plan, but I couldn't do it. I love Nehemiah too, Nehemiah too much, man. I, I just couldn't just try to fit him in at the end because um, some of you are Lions fans and you'll get mad at me and you'll want to <laughs> head to the door. But I'm going to do Nehemiah next week. Um, I, I love Nehemiah. It's a great book on leadership. But they all go together in terms of the timing of it all. And um, they all are about the fulfillment of God's plan after the 70 years. The return to Jerusalem. The restoring of the temple and the walls of protection around the city. There are these three books. I cannot help but see God's plan for the faithful Christian. I can't help but see God's plan for the backsliding Christian. And I can't help but see God's plan for anyone that wants to get closer to God. Do you fall into any of those categories? Because if, they, if you do, then you're going to love this message because it will speak to you. Throughout the Bible, there's been one main truth that has never changed, and that is God has chosen to dwell on earth in his temple. If you read the whole Bible, if you've read it all the way through, you know where does God dwell? It's always in his temple. In First and Second Kings, which we just looked at recently, we saw that God came down in this cloud and it filled the temple so much so that if it happened right now, right in this place, we would not be able to see one another. And they called it the Shekinah glory. It was so wonderful, the glory of God dwelling in his temple. And I want to tell you today that God is still dwelling in his temple. And it's God's plan for you to restore the temple. And we're going to see what that really means in this message, to restore the temple. Will you pray with me?